this uh, cave that had Indian artifacts in it and so forth. And so, uh, you know, 64, I think it was, they came up here to do some explorations, uh, found some artifacts, uh, saw the potentiality uh, for scientific investigation and discoveries, contacted the State Museum in Albany, and uh, the state archaeologist, Dr. Robert Funk, uh, with his field team came here, and uh, I think uh, major excavations here in the mid-1960s, so Duchess Quarry won. Now, just to show you how hard everybody worked, if you see this orange line right over there, let me point it out. This orange line over here, you see that? And there's another orange line right over here. Mm -hmm. This was the extent of the fill that was in here, all that rock and rubble. Yeah. That had to be moved out of here. So uh, the volunteers from the Orange County chapter would come here weekend after weekend and work unbelievably hard to clear out this uh, cave for excavation. On your book, there's a picture of Bill Ellers. Yeah. Squatting in here because it, uh, oh, wow. that was not enough room. Jeez. Yeah. I had a group in here with a fellow that was fairly elderly, and he talked about coming here as a child when he was at the one-room schoolhouse, and the school marm would bring him down, and they would go in. Huh. And the horror story was that one time, the school marm got stuck. <laughs> no, jeez. <laughs> That's how tight that opening was. They left her there while they explored the cave. Right. And after that, there was no more visitation from that school <laughs> in this cave. But so, that's, hilarious. that's how tight it was. That, that, and that story, I've been told by the people that were there, two of them that were at that, at that time had come in. They both had basically the same story, and they were, they thought it was hilarious. Yeah, here you can see Bill Ehlers uh, squatting uh, before the uh, rubble was removed from the cave. So I'll give you an idea of, again, these uh, dedicated uh, weekend warriors, you know, in archaeology coming here and uh, digging all this stuff out. But it paid off because once they were able to start digging, uh, you know, into uh, what we call living layers where there was human artifacts, they found an amazing assemblage of artifacts ranging all the way from paleo, and I have a replica of the point I'm going to show everybody. I'll pass it around. Please don't put it in your pocket. Uh, give it back to me. It's very precious to me. But uh, this uh, fluted point here, we call a Clovis point and the general tradition of fluted points, or more specifically here in the Northeast, a Cumberland point. And I don't know if I want to go all the way with Barnes variant. I think it's getting a little too yeah, particular. Yeah, there's, there's two variants and, they, yeah. and the technology was a little different making them. Yeah, but. And there's huge arguments among the, the fancy <laughs> folk as to which one is older. Yeah. John Lothrop at the New York State Museum thinks they're sort of the same period. People down in, in Alabama are screaming at him, come down, come down, take a look. We've got carbon dates that show you that the Cumberland is older than the barn. Who knows? Who knows? But it's a very old um, fluted point. Remember, not a spear point or an arrow point, but probably an atlatl dart point. I pointed out at Laddles yesterday in uh, my talk. I hope you were there to, to see that. But beside the Paleo Point, uh, from all following stages of cultural evolution in this region uh, to archaic points like uh, this one up here, uh, to um, woodland points like the Levana points, pre Iroquois points up there. So the range of occupation. Uh, from the artifacts that were found here, ranged over many thousands of years. Uh, besides the, uh, the uh, uh, spear points and dart points and ad points, later on these were probably arrow points uh, and later traditions. Levana and uh, Madison were both arrow yeah. points as opposed to dart points. There's a drill, there's an eyed bone needle, which I think was a very important discovery. Eyed bone needles are first found in the Upper Paleolithic in Europe. And so this was a major invention because instead of just wearing loose cloaks of uh, fur, now they could actually sew fur, to, you know, skins together to form form-fitting clothing, which must have been extremely important as far as adapting to uh, glacial conditions, for example. So there's that very important needle. There are bone uh, awls and drills and things like that. There is a deer sternum, which was, you know, frontal bone here, probably used as a scraper or a deflesher. 
So uh, really uh, very interesting and important artifacts. Oh. So as you're digging, first you'd find the woodland stuff, and then you'd find uh, uh, the, the clovis would be last, and the it was kind of all pile? jumbled. Um, but uh, the lowest stratum, which they call stratum two, if a half ton block falls on my head, you know, please come and clean up the mess. Uh, nope, we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> but it's a good burial somewhere, there somewhere. Uh, George Walters, who actually was the excavator who found it, although he didn't actually, he told me uh, that he didn't actually see it. He was scraping dirt into a bucket to be brought up to the top to be shaken out. Uh, so he was scraping, scraping, and then the guy up at the top said, oh my God, look what we just came, look what we found. And it was found somewhere around in here, in a, a lower strata. And I'll pass this around, and this was uh, an amazing, this is a facsimile, of course, the uh, the actual ones at the State Museum in Albany. But if you guys are lucky that I have this rare facsimile, what is? they'll notice point that, was found here. The point that this, this really important fluted Paleo-Indian point that was found here, this is a facsimile of it. So when you look at it, look at the channel flakes that were taken out on both sides. That is supreme uh, craftsmanship. As far as flint napping, you've got to be the best of the best to be able to uh, you know, create uh, channel flakes like this. Um, I did, can can uh, Gary do it? Gary Sipola? Yes. Is he able to? Yep. Okay. Yep. Well, good for you. The thing about that point in the New York State Museum, John Wilbrook told me that people from Siberia have come to look at it, Germany have come to look at it, France have come to look at it too. Look and see how their typologies are different and what the technologies are that are, that are different.